In the previous video, we looked at measurement issues relating to elasticity and how to interpret different values of elasticity. In this one, what we'll do is we will look at one of the important elasticities and that will be on the demand side called own price elasticity of demand or simply price elasticity of demand. We know the demand curve is downward sloping because of law of demand and which simply states ceteris paribus there is a negative relationship between quantity demanded and price of the same product. So let us examine own price elasticity of demand as it relates to the demand. Now we know own price elasticity of demand will be percent change in quantity demanded divided by percent change in price. Or well, the question we are asking is by how much percent does demand change when price changes by 1%? We already know that the demand curve is downward sloping and hence elasticity number will always be negative. And for comparison purposes, what we'll do is we'll use absolute value of elasticity and this will make life simple for ourselves. Now, higher the absolute value of elasticity, that simply means the dependent variable, which is quantity demanded of coffee, is more responsive to changes in price. And lower the absolute value of own price elasticity of demand, it will simply mean it is less responsive to changes in price. Suppose the absolute value of own price elasticity of demand turns out to be less than 1. Now, just remember the formula we had for own price elasticity of demand. In the numerator, we had percent change in quantity demanded. And in the denominator, we had percent change in price. So when the absolute value of own price elasticity of demand is less than 1, what this means is, in an absolute sense, the value of the numerator must be less than the value of the denominator. Or in other words, Bigger changes in price cause smaller changes in quantity demanded of coffee. This situation is referred to as inelastic demand. Or in other words, this person is less responsive to changes in prices in elastic demand. Now, let us use our imagination. When are people not likely to care about prices or their demand will not change much? in response to changes in prices. One of the reasons could be when you have shorter time period to decide and purchase something. For example, suppose I have a job interview tomorrow and I need to purchase a tie that I need to wear for the interview. And so what I'll do is I'll walk into any of the stores and whichever tie I find seems to be appealing to me, I'll just buy it and won't really care much about the price. So when you have shorter time period to decide and to purchase, chances are you will have a situation of inelastic demand. Another reason could be when we consider this good to be essential for living or a necessity. Now, consider the case of gasoline. All of us need gasoline in our cars to drive around and it is considered to be an essential good or a necessity. So when the price of gas jumps up to say by a dollar, how much do we adjust our demand based on that? Not much. And in that case, we are likely to find inelastic demand. Another reason as to why we may have inelastic demand, and that is when we spend relatively less proportion of our income on this particular item. For example, I purchase a can of salt every six months and a can of salt costs about $2. And even if the price of salt jumped up to $4, my demand for salt will not change much. So these are some reasons as to why we may have less responsive demand or what we call inelastic demand. 
And once again, inelastic demand happens when absolute value of own price elasticity demand is less than 1. And in an extreme case, when price changes, nothing happens to demand or own price elasticity of demand exactly equals 0. And this is referred to as a situation of perfectly inelastic demand. Consider a demand curve which is vertical. And what this means is the consumer wants this many unit of this particular good and is willing to pay any price of this. Or in other words, there is no change in quantity demanded irrespective of the price. And this is an example of perfectly in elastic demand. Now let us look at the other case that is when absolute value of price elasticity of demand is greater than 1. This situation is referred to as elastic demand and in this case since we want absolute value of price elasticity to be greater than 1 that simply means that the absolute value of the numerator must be greater than the absolute value of denominator or in other words that means people are more responsive or sensitive to price changes so when are you likely to be sensitive to price changes or when will you be careful about price levels it will happen when you have longer time period to decide for example if i have two weeks to purchase a tie I can shop around and look for the lowest possible price. So when you have longer time to purchase, you are likely to be sensitive to prices. Number two, if the good is non-essential for living. And number three is if the proportion of income spent on this good is large, then you'll be careful about prices. For example, a house or a car purchase is a major one for us. And so when we purchase a car or purchase a house, we are likely to be sensitive or be careful about the price. Elastic demand, that's what we are looking at. And in, in extreme case, this is called perfectly elastic demand. In this case, the own value, value of own price elasticity of demand equals infinity. In this diagram, what I have drawn is a horizontal demand curve and this is supposed to reflect the case of perfectly elastic demand and i've already told you that the value of elasticity of demand will be infinity when do you get this number as infinity when you divide something by zero now here on this horizontal line you find there is no change in price or change in price equals zero and so when you divide this expression by zero, you get infinity. And this is the case of perfectly elastic demand. Now let us look at the third case when absolute value of price elasticity of demand is equal to one. That means in an absolute sense, the value of the numerator will equal absolute value of the denominator. And so when price increases by 5%, demand will fall exactly by 5%. If this happens, it is called unit elastic demand or the value of own price elasticity of demand in an absolute sense is 1. Now consider the case of a straight line demand curve. And here what I've done is I've written down the formula for point elasticity of demand and we are looking at own price elasticity of demand. Now consider a point let's call this a what do you find here at this extreme point what is the value of price here price equals zero so if you plug in a value of price equals zero here what will happen to this whole expression it will collapse to zero so here what we'll have is perfectly inelastic demand and this will happen when price is zero now look at this extreme point and here what you find is 
quantity demanded equals zero let's call this point b quantity demanded equals zero so once you plug in the value of zero here in place of quantity demanded this whole thing will become infinity or undefined or what we are looking at here is an extremely large value of elasticity or what we have called perfectly elastic demand now Point B represents an extremely high value of price elasticity of demand. Point A represents the lowest possible value of elasticity of demand. So as price falls, what will happen to the absolute value of own price elasticity of demand? It will go on decreasing and eventually it will hit zero. Here I have written down numbers relating to price elasticity of demand in the US for different products. For example, when you look at furniture, the price elasticity of demand is 1.26, or in other words, we have elastic demand for furniture. And this should make sense simply because furniture is an expensive item for most people. Look at motor vehicles, again you find elastic demand. Professional services like that of hair cutter, insurance agent, and so on, elastic demand. Then you look at these four items, gas, electricity, and water, inelastic demand. Basic clothing, books that we need for college, and food, you find inelastic demand. And so in a way, these numbers for the U.S. conform to our beliefs based on what we consider to be essential for living and what we consider to be not essential for living. And also we know what is the proportion of income spent on different items. When it's large, we are likely to be sensitive. When it's not that large, we are not likely to be that sensitive to price level. Now, this is what businesses are interested in, and that is the relationship between price elasticity of demand price and consumer expenditure and why are they interested because the money that we spend on goods and services becomes their sales revenue now look at the following suppose we have inelastic demand suppose we are looking at demand for gasoline and i purchase for example 20 gallons of gasoline every month if the price is two dollars my expenditure on gas will be forty dollars if the price is $4 per gallon, my expenditure will be $80. So what happens when we have inelastic demand? What you find is an increase in price causes an increase in consumer expenditure. And the opposite is true as well. For elastic demand, there is an inverse relationship between price and consumer expenditure an increase in price will cause a decrease in consumer expenditure and the opposite will also be true a decrease in price will cause an increase in consumer expenditure when we have unit elastic demand this gives us a very interesting relationship and that is there is no relationship between price and consumer expenditure consider the case of a young boy who receives five dollars as pocket money or weekly allowance and he's very interested in buying baseball cards if he likes baseball cards which are worth one dollar a piece the maximum he can buy is five cards why because his month weekly expenditure on weekly income is five dollars if he likes a baseball card which is worth five dollars how many baseball cards would he buy just one so this information between price and consumer expenditure is very useful for businesses to set their price level and that's what why they try to find out where do they have inelastic demand elastic or unit elastic demand and this completes our discussion of own price elasticity of demand thank you for your time